Hi, thanks for joining me. 1,000 subscribers. I am so, so happy and so delighted to have hit this milestone and also to have hit it really quickly. I made this channel back in July of 2020 over sort of lockdown here in the UK and I just thought I started making some videos. I ended up sort of uploading one video every other day and somehow I've managed to stick to that sort of schedule where every other day I'd upload at least one maths video. And that kind of goes to show that I really do enjoy making these videos and it's actually really nice to know that so many people enjoy watching them as well. So a massive, massive thank you to you for watching this video, for watching any of my videos, for commenting, liking, subscribing or sharing or anything like that to help promote my channel. And I guess the aim of this is also to promote maths and to show that maths can actually be pretty cool and pretty fun as well. So thank you to you. Um, and as I say, all of my milestones, I'll say it again today and I'll say it again whenever I hit another milestone, onwards and upwards. Let's make this a pretty big maths YouTube channel. Anyway, today's 1K special, what I'm going to be doing is actually revisiting uh, an old video I made. In fact, this is one of my earliest videos on the channel in which I evaluate this sum here. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus so on off to infinity. So adding up all the positive integers. Now, what does this guy equal? Now, this is a pretty famous, or oh, number file, sorry, made a pretty famous video uh, trying to evaluate this sum here, and they showed that it equals a particular value. I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll leave a link for that video in the description below. Black Pen Red Pen also made a video in which he does this sum here, and he evaluates it to some different number, and again, I'll leave that a link for that in the description below. And my two earliest videos, I evaluated this guy here to two further different numbers as well. So I'll leave links for those in the description below. And I recommend you go and check out the ones that I made just to see the difference in sort of the quality and the style of teaching, I guess, in the six months or so since I made those videos. Um, but yeah, links for the, all those in the description below. But today I'm going to be trying to make the best 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus so on video on YouTube by showing you that you can make this guy here equal any positive integer you want. So you give me your favourite positive integer, say 27 or whatever, I can show you how you can make this guy here equal 27. Let's just say this is going to be very, very strange. Okay, so the way I want to work out a value for s, so 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on, is I'm actually going to introduce a new infinite series, t. So t is going to be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 all the way off to infinity. So just summing up a bunch of 1s, and what we want to do is write s in terms of t and try and work out what t is. Now, obviously, just sort of staring at these two things, you can sort of say, well, they clearly just go to infinity, and they actually do. But in today's video, I'm going to be showing that, you know, if you... If you just sort of drop the rigour of your maths a little bit, drop, uh, you know, justifications ever so slightly, you can end up with some bizarre results. And that sort of emphasises why maths has to be so rigorous. OK, but uh, yeah, so we're just going to be doing some dodgy illegal maths in this video. Anyway, let's start off with S. And what we're going to do is subtract the mth triangle number. OK, so we're going to have S minus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus M. Now m is just some positive integer which we're free to choose and we'll at the end we'll choose what m is to uh, help us evaluate what s is. Okay, so m is just some positive integer which we're free to choose. Okay, so s minus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to m. Well, if we just look at what s is, the first m terms are going to cancel with this guy here. So all we're going to be left up with is m plus 1 plus m plus 2 plus m plus 3, and so on, oopsie daisy, and so on, off to infinity. Okay, now what I want to do is write this guy here in terms of s and t. So what I'm going to do is just write this first as m plus 1, plus m plus 2, plus m plus 2, so just dropping all the brackets. 
And now you can see we have a bunch of m's here. So m plus m plus m plus another m plus another m. So what I'm going to do is just factor out the m. Okay, and then because uh, I factored out the m, I'm left with 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus dot dot dot, like so on. So when I expand this guy here, I'm going to get m plus m plus m and so on. But I'm left with these things here, the 1, the 2, the 3. So I've got to add that on as well here. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot dot dot, like so. Okay, now if we look at what this guy here is, m times 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on. This is just mt. And then this guy here is just 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus so on, which is, which is just s. Okay, so we've shown that s minus the mth triangle number is uh, the same as m times t plus s. Okay, obviously now we can sort of cancel the s's from both sides. Um, so let me just rub this line off here. So we have s minus 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 all the way up to m. This thing here is equal to m times t plus s, as we've just shown. Cancelling the s from both sides, we're left with this. But there's a nice formula for uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to m. It's just m times m plus 1 over 2. So if you haven't seen that before, I'll leave a link in the description below to a video in which I prove that. But so here we have minus m times m plus 1 over 2 equals m times t. And remember, because m is just some positive integer, in particular it's non-zero, so I can divide through by it. So I get that t is equal to minus m plus 1 over 2, where m plus 1, uh, where m again is just some arbitrary positive integer. Okay, so let's just take a moment to pause and think about this. We've just shown this guy here, 1 plus 1 plus 1, all the way up to infinity. It's firstly negative, because we've got this negative sign out front but also it can equal a bunch of values by just varying m over the positive integers. So we've already hit a big sort of level of madness, a big bizarre uh, sort of result, but we're going to go one step further and try and use this to evaluate s. Let me bring this to the top of the whiteboard and we'll continue. Okay, so now what I want to do is look at s minus t, but before I do that I want to rewrite t in a sort of different way. And that's, the way I'm going to do that is just by adding on a bunch of zeros. So of course just adding on a bunch of zeros isn't going to change anything, but I'm going to add on a bunch of zeros to this right hand side. So I have that t is equal to 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 and so on. Okay, so sort of alternating 1, 0, 1, 0, of course the zeros will just vanish and we'll be left with 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on, which is just t. Okay, now what I want to do is look at s minus t. So if I do s minus t on the left hand side, I just have s minus t, so I'm doing this line here minus this line here. So 1 minus 1 is 0, so I'm not going to write that down. Then I get 2 minus 0, so that's 2. 3 minus 1, that's 2. 4 minus 0, that's 4. And the next term is 5 minus 1, that's 4. The next is 6 minus 0, is 6. Then 7 minus 1 is 6, and so on. So you can see we're getting sort of pairs of all the even numbers. So 2 plus 2, then 4 plus 4, 6 plus 6, and so on, all the way up to infinity. So all the even numbers. But 2 plus 2 is just 4. Boom! 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. 6 plus 6 is 12, the next thing then will be seven, uh, sorry, 8 plus 8, which is 16, and so on. And now you can see we're getting all the multiples of 4. So I can factor out a 4, let me just squeeze it in at the bottom here, 4. Then 4 times 1, of course, gives me that 4. 4 times 2 gives me the 8 there. 4 times 3 gives me the 12 there. 4 times 4 gives me 16, and so on. And now hopefully you can see this guy here, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and so on. Remember, that's just what we defined s to be. So we get that this guy here equals 4s. Okay, so we have s minus t is equal to 4s. So of course, then we can sort of rearrange that formula to get that, let me write it here, 3s equals minus t. Okay, now what I'm going to do is use this thing here, clean the whiteboard, and then we'll make our final statement. Okay, so we've just shown that a 3s equals minus t, and before we showed that t equals minus m plus 1 over 2, where m is just some arbitrary positive integer that we're free to choose. 
and uh, in just a moment we're going to choose m, but firstly let's write s in terms of m, so 3s equals minus t, but t equals minus m plus 1 over 2, so combining those two things, we have that 3s is equal to minus t, so that's minus minus m plus 1 over 2, or just m plus 1 over 2. Now of course we can just divide both sides by 3, so we get the s is now equal to m plus 1 over 6, and now what we want to do is choose m accordingly, and this isn't too difficult. You want, we, I want to show that s equals your favourite positive integer, so let's call your favourite positive integer uh, capital N. And we want to show that s equals a, uh, n, so we can now, we're free to choose what little m is, so we're simply going to say let little m equal 6n minus 1. So if we do 6 times your favourite positive integer, then subtract 1 from that, and then when we plug that back into this thing here, we see that s is equal to 6n minus 1, then the plus 1 there, all over 6. Of course, a minus 1 and plus 1 cancel, and then the 6 and 6 cancel, so this guy here just equals n. I guess one sort of subtlety we've got to check, and I say we've got to check there are a bunch of things in this proof here, or proof, which are just completely wrong, um, but the thing I guess we do have to check is that m is a positive integer, but because capital N is a positive integer, 6n is at least 6, so 6n minus 1 is at least 5, and it's quite clearly going to be an integer, so certainly m is a positive integer. Okay, so we've shown that s equals n equals your favourite positive integer, and yeah, this proof has a bunch of holes in it. Let me know in the comments your favourite sort of flaw of this proof, and also let me know if you can get s to equal some other sort of set of numbers. Can you get it to equal negative uh, integers, or can you even get it to equal sort of a bunch of fractions as well? Let me know. Have a play with this sum and see what you can do. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed my 1K special. As always, a massive, massive thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Onwards and upwards, onwards and upwards, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.